If you're playing 200-400, some of the highest stakes possible online, you can't hide from elite players. These guys are some of the best players in the world. But if you play mid stakes or lower and see your opponent make a play like this, you should be alarmed and maybe try to avoid playing against them too much. So let's see what it is and how you can be able to make this play yourself and be the one who is feared by your opponents. Three betting ace king and flopping top pair is always nice. A 25% c-bet is the best sizing to use on this flop and you could do it with your complete range. Even when betting so small, your opponent would have to fold 33% of the time. Because his white calling range on the button is much wider with the 200 big blind stacks than with 100 big blinds. And a lot of his hands completely missed the flop. The weakest hands he would still have to call are some queen and jack high hands with backdoor flush draws. The turn brings in the flush, which is not too much of a problem when we have the king of clubs. But overall, it does make both players' ranges quite equal in terms of their strength. We did have a big advantage on the flop, but when we see bet every hand in our range and the button folded the bottom third of their range, we must take that into account when playing the turn with our range. Our hand could go for a bet here, but checking is also very much a thing. Against the bet, we have an easy call. Of course, Barak could have a lot of good hands, but against any flush we have outs and he could simply be bluffing. On the river, we hit our flush, which is great. Now the solver would actually implement the donk banning strategy here and ace king with a club would be a big part of it. There's a big shift in equity and high clubs like ace king, ace queen, kings and queens can get value that they wouldn't when Barak checks behind a lot of lower flushes for example. Also checking only really makes sense when you expect your opponent to be able to have bluffs here, which could be pretty difficult on this board. We do see a check though and get confronted with This. Now the interesting thing here is that this really big bet is very polarizing. It's either the nuts or a bluff. Because it wouldn't make sense to bet anything worse than a nut flush for this size. And since we have the king of clubs, it's either a full house or better, or a nothing. But as just mentioned, finding bluffs on this runout isn't easy. A lot of hands that float the flop include a club as do many hands that bluff the turn. So which hand can you think of that gets to the river as a bluff? Well for the solver it would be hands like king x of diamonds, ace jack and ace 10 and pocket fours without a club. But especially the pairs ace 10, ace jack and also pocket fours are really hard to find in practice. What's way more likely for most players, even good ones, is to mostly check them and try to win at showdown. So very often these wouldn't even bet the turn. And for us as the guy facing the bet, we have to remember that an opponent needs to find not some of these bluffs, but all of them for us to have a profitable bluff catcher. So when you see someone who is capable of finding some of these bluffs, Then you know you're facing an elite player. But what can be even more important for you and something you can exploit more easily is knowing about the flip side. King Jack suited in the big blind is a good hand to 3 bet. And can be c bet for 20% pot as Nacho does here. Now in this spot, our opponent would only need to fold less than 15% of his hands. Many hands have decent equity including direct or backdoor draws. So only the ones without or with really bad backdoor equity would have to be folded. The king on the turn heavily improves our range as we are the one who has a lot more ace kings, aces and kings in his range. Combined with the 200 big blind deep stacks, the solver would go for an overbet here to get max value out of these best hands. 
As usual, a big bet size means a polarized betting range, so mostly very good and very bad hands. So our second pair of kings falls exactly into the category of hands that are never bet here. Facing a bet here isn't very comfortable, since there are of course many hands that beat us. However, we saw that there are also a big amount of draws that called the flop. So with so many bluffs possible in Taisto's range, we still have a call here. And on the river, we can see the exact opposite of the hand we saw before. Here, Taisto's range can include a lot of bluffs. Hands like 7-8 suited, 7-9 suited and 8-9 suited are very natural bluffs that pretty much anyone could arrive at this spot with. Jack-8 and Queen-10 of clubs are also understandable to be called on the flop and be bad on the turn. Pairs like 3s, 4s, 7s, 8s and 4, 5 and 6, 7 are almost as difficult to find as the pairs in the hand before, but they are also a lot more. So the range of hands Taisto could select as bluffs here is way wider than in the first hand. Which is why in practice this spot is much more likely to be over bluffed. Whereas the first spot will be heavily under bluffed. Here even a hand like 7-8 student would have to be checked back. Even though it is the literal bottom of Taisto's range. Very unintuitive and unlikely to happen in practice. But why is it not bluffing? Well in this spot, the button's range is extremely divided. Every hand worse than a pair of kings is actually worse than every hand in the big blinds range. So when a low pair doesn't even have any showdown value, choosing bluffs is completely detached from that criterion. Here, of all third pairs and lower hands in the button's range, the best bluffs are those that block the most amount of calls, while also unblocking the most amount of folds. And 7-8 suited blocks more folds in a7, a8 and king8 than queen10 suited for example, which blocks more calls, like ace-queen and ace10. So while not bluffing the bottom of your range can just be a mistake by a weak player, in spots like this where it's very easy to overbluff, it can also just show an elite player. But to really recognize the difference in practice, you'll need reads. And to see where and how your reads make you the most money, watch this video next.